Hey everybody. So, I just finished cleaning off most of the vehicles. We got a, a big dump of snow, and now it's raining, so I had to clean off everything so that roofs didn't cave in and stuff. So I figured while we're at it, maybe we should uh, fire up some of these old girls. Now we're going to try and start everything with a battery in it. Anything that doesn't have a battery in it, I'm not going to bother with. Um, oh, I just heard a branch come down. The, uh, the 95 and the 94 1500s we won't bother with. Uh, the 94 has a knock that I need to fix, and the 95 doesn't even have a starter in it because the 95 starter is in the 97. Oh, man, that was a lot of dates. So let's pull the tarp off of uh, the tractor here. I'm going to check the oil, and then I'm going to try firing it up. Sorry I'm shaking. It's uh, this cold... It always feels more cold when it's wet, and I'm sure I'm like crazy. Right, so the fluids are good. Uh, this is a 1976 Volvo BM650, uh, non-turbo. Uh, it's got, let me think, uh, 3,900 and change, which isn't bad. Uh, I've got this up in Canada here. They are rebranded under the co-op tractors. And sold here in Canada. They didn't sell them down in the States. Let's see if she'll go. She's got no glow plugs, so... I think we're going to have to give her a little bit of go juice. Uh, but let's give it one more try just in case. Give her a little more gas. Oh! for a tractor that age, eh? Nothing seems to be stuck. Wow, look at that. I can't believe that. This hasn't been started in, uh... Hmm. Probably since, well, before September for sure. It's, uh, it's the 20th of October today. No, November. It's the 20th of November. Do you remember? So yeah, that one started up not bad. No go juice or nothing. So I guess what we'll do next is we'll try and start the 97 uh, K1500 and the 95 Ford Escort. Alright, I did a bit of walking around. This thing should be up to temperature now, so I gotta shut it off. Uh, this cable's froze up here, so to shut it off, I gotta do this. I do have this, uh, this here hooked up. It goes around the, the filler on the, on the pump there. All the way to the back. Not perfect, but it does work when I'm driving it. So, whoa, toasty. Yeah, she's up to temperature. When that cools down, I'll throw uh, the tarp back over it. So let's walk over to the K15. Uh, 1997 4x4 four four with a Bushmaster lift kit. Uh, sorry for the crappy camera work. I didn't want to take out my gimbal because I'm a lazy prick. Um, I don't think we'll start the Kubota because I was using it yesterday to move snow before we got the big wet dump. Uh, so this truck is, like I said, it's a 97. Uh, it hasn't been started in at least two months, maybe three. Uh, it's, it's a good truck. Uh, the only thing is the transmission blew up. I got another one, but I want to... Well, I say I don't have a shop to put it in, and there's like over a foot of snow on the ground here, so... It should start. Uh, I've got the solar panel hooked up to the battery to keep it charged. 
Oh, brakes still work. Clutch is good. Neutral. All right. So this has got focus 249,600 kilometers on it. Oh. Good sign. Just like that. Beautiful. Oil pressure looks good. Oh, look at that. The signal light's making the fuel gauge twitch. That's funny. Come on, focus. Everything looks good. Charge, oil pressure. Awesome. Let's try and start this thing. So this is Gastine, the twin sister to uh, the 1994 Ford Escort we had. This is a uh, I'm not sure what's going to show up like on camera here, but this is kind of like a chromoly pink. It's called Sunset Sunset Metallic Red. It wasn't a hugely popular color, but my uh, my fiance's first vehicle was a 1994 Ford Escort that was tragically murdered in the line of duty. It saved her life. A guy failed to yield, and she hit him doing about a buck ten. That's in kilometers an hour, and um, b unbelievably. Uh, walked away from the accident with just whiplash and uh, a bruised um, chest bone. But uh, the 94, whole front end pushed up, passenger side pushed in, roof buckled up about four inches right about here above the driver's comp uh, compartment. But when uh, when I went back to the, uh, the tow yard where it got towed to before uh, the insurance company took it for estimation and, and the investigation. Um, I pushed the uh, collision reset in the back and it started up. I couldn't believe it. Screamed like crazy, but the engine still fired up. That was the best fucking car we've ever had. And this one needs a CV joint and I need, I'm gonna do the timing belt and the water pump. As you can see in there, it's a five speed. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the door open without shoveling. So uh, I will take care of that right now, and then I'll be right back. All right, the oil's good. Um, just in case anybody watching this video ever wants a really good car. So these vehicles, there was uh, two models of similar body style. I'm not sure when exactly they transitioned. I think it might have been 1997, might have been the first year they changed them. But this is technically a Mazda Protégé station wagon, uh, rebadged under the Ford name. So this engine, bulletproof engine, um, I think it's 1991 to 1996 they did this run, or 1990 to 1996, I'm not sure about that. But this engine is really good. The next generation, similar architecture, but it's split port induction, don't touch those cars. Don't touch them at all. Um, they almost religiously blow up at 200,000 kilometers, unless you're really anal about maintenance. These engines? You beat the shit out of them. As long as you change the oil, you're fine. Uh, they're non-interference, so if your timing belt or anything like that ever snaps, no big deal. Throw another one in, you're good to go. Uh, also, stay away from the automatics, uh, if you can. But if you can find one of these cars with uh, relatively low mileage and a 5-speed, snatch it up. Fantastic vehicle. Great fuel economy. And you can throw tons and tons and tons of stuff in the back of this thing, and it'll haul like a truck. I know, because we did that quite a bit with our 90. 94. So this one's got 236. Um, when my fiance's was destroyed in the accident, it was pushing um, 340,000 kilometers. Uh, about 40,000 kilometers before that, I was going to do the timing belt and stuff. And so I did all that, and then I figured if anything else happens, I'm going to scrap it. So... Then the uh, transmission um, started to, to, I thought it was the transmission, I'm not sure about that now, uh, but it was getting hard to uh, shift. I uh, pulled it off, clutch was fine, because uh, it had had a clutch before we got it, but I put a new clutch in it, and I actually put another transmission in the car, because when I did the compression test, it was damn near factory compression, it was unbelievable. So this should fire right up, it's, uh, I think it's fuel injected. All right, clutch sensor, modern technology. Just like that. 
neutral. Nice. Beautiful. These are great vehicles. I absolutely love these things. Um, it doesn't have to be the station wagon model either. But if you can get the station wagon, all the better. Because like I said, uh, cargo capacity. And you can sleep in the back of these when you go camping. My uh, fiance's was getting damn near 30 miles per gallon. Which is really impressive, I think. And uh, it didn't matter if it had a load in it of people uh, or not. We took hers from Armstrong, BC, all the way to Edmonton, Canada Day, about uh, more stuff on about five years ago. And all the way to Edmonton was about 80 bucks in gas, which is nothing. There was four people and loaded with uh, with everybody's um, travel stuff, like a champ. It was about 40, 41 degrees that day. We stopped in, I can't remember if it was Banff for Jasper that day, and laid in the glacier-fed um, river there in the park. Man, that was a good time. A lot of good memories in that car. But, uh, yeah, if you can pick one of these up, go for it. But like I said, um, stay away from the automatic transmissions unless you're 100% sure they've been maintained. About every... 100k, 100,000k, I would uh, flush the transmission out, but eventually that automatic transmission is going to die and that engine's going to keep going. Five speed is definitely the way to go. Working on the transmission on this, for another note, is stupid easy. Um, pull the CV on this side, uh, undo the engine mounts, put a block underneath, you can pull it out by hand, it weighs like next to nothing, pop the new one on, it's like an afternoon's job and you don't even need a hoist or anything it's fantastic so what else can we start uh Volkswagens don't have batteries in them one of them only one of them starts anyways that diesel truck it's got no compression and the blue one no spark unless i muck with it so we're not going to do that but everything started um i'll let everything get up the temperature i guess and then it'll all sit here till the spring, and then in the spring, I'll do a bunch of work on this one. I think I just heard something land on the camper over there. A lot of wet, heavy snow falling out of the trees. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and until next time, be safe.